Anyway, hi. <laughs> Good morning. I'm sorry if that actually makes it in the video. <clears throat> no, it's actually p.m., not a.m. right now. Uh, later. <laughs> Alright, where are we? Uh, yes, it's Tuesday. I start my week on Tuesday, so it's technically the second Monday for me, or whatever. I don't know. Hi. Good morning. Happy day that ends in the letter Y. It is the 311th day of the year. 311th day. So we know what music we're going with today, yes? 311? I think so. At least for the better part of the morning. This week kind of get you pumped, get you going. It's good rock. I think so. Back in the day, we're just going to go right into it. 1504, Christopher Columbus. It's mine. It's mine. Mine. He returns from his fourth trip from the Americas, last voyage. Between 1492 and 1504, Columbus competed, completed four round trip voyages between Spain and the Americas, each voyage, each voyage being sponsored by the crown of Castillo. I think I said that right. It has a little thingy on the side of it. Columbus demanded that the crown of Castillo give him his tenth of all the riches and trade goods yielded by the lands as stipulated in the capsulations of Santa Fe. I'm just like, I know I said, I'm not even going to go, no, 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 no. Because he had been relieved of his duties of governor, newsflash, the crown did not feel bound by that contract and his demands were rejected. Sorry about your luck. I'm not in the club anymore. After his death, his heirs sued the crown for the part of his profits for the trade with America. Americas. North and South thing. Central. Just a thought. I mean, the whole thing. It's like, hey, white guys, there's a big old... Anyways. Uh, as well as... Other... <laughs> Back to it. Uh, the kids sued the crown for the money and gold thing, what stuff. We'll get to that. As well as other re reward, other rewards, other rewards, say it. This led to <laughs> protract, this led to the protracted series of legal disputes known as the stuff, Columbi the Colombian lawsuits. Placito, Placitos Colombinos. Pip's notes. Made all that money about all those ships and they forgot how they got that green. Or, as we said, gold. But actually, Chris did not bring back that much gold. But, by green, he brought back yams, potatoes, pineapples, peppers, cocoa, vanilla, papaya squash, corn, tomatoes, peanuts, cotton, avocados. Cotton's in here twice. I didn't do that. And the turkeys. He, Columbus brought back turkeys, and like a decade later, everyone started bringing back turkeys. It was became a thing. Ironically, I think on the, um, this is the Mayflower, they were bringing turkeys back to America. Moving on. <laughs> 1874, a cartoonist by the name of Thomas Nast. Sorry, Tom. Thomas Nast in the Harper's Weekly is considered the first... Alright, I actually copied and pasted that directly from Wikipedia. That doesn't make sense. Basically, he used a... He was a comic or uh, cartoonist. Uh, he drew, drew the first elephant relating to the Republican National Party. Released today. Pip's notes. Nass did not create the Uncle Sam male personification for the U.S. federal government. Columbia, which I had to look that up. That was actually a thing. She's like a, almost looks like the Columbia movie, but Columbia America. She's got the stars and stripes. Go look it up. It's on Wikipedia. You should know this stuff. I didn't, and I was kind of born here. Um, Columbia is the female personification of American values. 
he didn't do the donkey for the Democratic, and everyone thought that he created those two. So. Free publicity. Anyway. 17. I'm not bore you on that stuff. What else is going on? Who sings? 1786, the oldest musical organization in the United States is founded as the Stolagon Musical Society, which is later renamed Old Stolagon. Stoughton? I'll go Stoughton. Stoughton looks just looks better. So basically, a group of 25 dudes decide to sing, to make a singing society. And with those secret societies. Well, it's not really secret if everybody knows it. It's on Wiki, so it's not secret, but so are the Knights of Templar and all that crap, right? I don't know. I've looked it up. Pip's Notes. The first collection of music that they bought is the Wish to Shear collection compiled by Isaiah Thomas in 1786. It's not like one of the four solid Jeeps. Which contained the first American printing of the Hallelujah Chorus from the Handel's Messiah. You know, hallelujah. That, that, yeah, that's this. First. Uh, 1893 in women's suffrages. Again, YouTube, this is a good thing. Women in the U.S. of Colorado are granted the right to vote. Unfortunately, it's only the second state to do so. I say this because Pip's notes, if you leave guys in charge, look at the shit we do. Sorry, this is why we have first aid kits and fire extinguishers all around. Not, we're not that bright. And <laughs> rolling into it, I actually didn't realize this until now. 1907. Jesus Garcia saves an entire town of, in Mexico, northwest Mexico. Narzoni de Garcia. I guess they maybe named it after him? Afterwards? I don't know. Narco... Uh... uh by driving a burning train full of dynamite over three and a half miles away. That's about six kilometers for the, anybody that actually watches that knows the Canadian stuff. Before it can explode. The dude is revered as a national hero. Streets are named after him. Schools are named after him all across Mexico, apparently. According to Wikipedia, again, I don't know if this is true. Because I've never been to Mexico except a few times when racing, but that's another story. The train was at a st was stopped at the town. He was resting. He saw some hay on the roof of the train car containing the dynamite had caught fire. Oh. The cause of fire was that the locomotive smoke box was failing and the sparks were going out the smokestack instead. Or, yeah, yes. Up the thing. The wind blew them and got them on the dynamite cars. Garcia drove the train. Apparently he knows how to drive a train. Cause... Am I sex? I don't know. What's the me uh, Mexican super... Uh. Drove the train reverse downhill at full steam. Three and a half miles out of town before it exploding him and the train along with it. Tips notes, I suddenly want to create a playlist around with music about fire explosions and runaway trains. Alright, that passed. Never mind. Moving along. 1973, the United States Congress overrides President Richard Nixon's veto of the War Powers Resolution. Which is actually, this is the thing that actually limits presidential power going to war without congressional approval. That now they call them, I don't even know. It seems like there's a lot of those going around. Just, just a thought. Bips notes Nixon said, and he stated that the restrictions on executive power would undermine the national's account accountability to respond to international crisis. <coughs> Patriot. Patriot. <coughs> that just sounds a little... Anyway. Uh, moving on. 1991. Completely different sports ball thing. Magic Johnson announces to the, that he actually has HIV and retires from the NBA. I think he's still alive, too. Hmm. Keep on ticking. 1994. 
WXYC, the student radio station of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, launches the first internet radio broadcast. So, like, podcasting start. Everything starts from... Oh, mm. What else went on? 1996, NASA launches the Mars Global Surveyor. This dude helped Mars rovers and landers and missions by all, scanning all across, seeing where the best places to go type of thing. Regulating the, um, to what, telemetry? Tele, te sorry. Year 2000, the controversial U.S. presidential election is later resolved in the Bush versus Gore Supreme Court case. Excuse me. Tough to swallow on that one. <clears throat> George Bu W. Bush is elected as the 43rd president of the U.S. What's in the 40? Pips notes. You mean there's a questionable U.S. election? 2020. Joe Biden is elected as the 46th president of the United States. You mean there's a questionable... U.S. election? Hmm. Happy birthdays! I like this guy. Never met him before. This is the first time I've seen him. IBM has him. Arabian philosopher and scholar, born 90, 994, died 1090, 1069. Um, I'll do Asian Muslim polymath, catching on that, historian, Mudanist, jurist, philosopher, and theologian. Now, this guy was raised by like a wealthy family and kind of high up, so he was. Well, let me. Having been right. Let me actually read this stuff before I try to spin it back from memory that I did three days ago. <sighs> Sorry. Having been raised in a politically and economically important family, hasn't, I think I said that right, mingled with people of power and influence his whole life. He had access to levels of government by his adolescence, by his adolescence so when he was a kid he was running around government buildings, um, had connections in where most people never even thought high up. Uh, never even knew throughout their whole lives. Let me try to reread that. And actually, no, let's keep going. Those experienced with government and political, pol government officials and politicians caused Hazim to develop a reluctant and even a sad skeptical a skepticism about human nature and the capacity of human beings to deceive and oppress. Failure, bro. And I got nothing to bitch about. I can't, but any worth talking about. Worth working about. His reaction was to believe, to believe that there was no refuge or truth except within an infallible God, and that with the men, with all, and with only men resided corruption. Yeah. Most people screw you over for a price of an extra value meal. I want to find a real friend? Give him a hundred bucks. Moving fast. Actually, no, I said that wrong. He was thus known for his cynicism <laughs> regarding humanity and strong respect for the principles of language and sincerity of communication. Pip's notes. Namaste. Elton. Let me pause. What's that? Make it a... So, as I was saying, namaste. Ah, ego. Moving on. 1789, Alfred Kelly, American legislator, canal builder, and railroad... Magnet died 1859. Dude was a banker, the canal builder, uh, lawyer, 
railroad executive, state legislator of Ohio. Considered by the historians to be one of the most prominent commercial, financial, and political Ohioans in the first half of the 19th century. Kelly is also known for the father of the Ohio and Erie Canal. Pips notes. There's a song in middle school that we had to sing. Something about uh, tell your neighbors, tell your pals, something about the Erie Canal. I don't know. I've been hit in the head a few times. 1832, Andrew Dixon White, American historian, academic, diplomat, co-founded Cornell University. Died in 1918. Cool. Who else we got? Ah! 1867. You might have heard of her. Marie Curie, a Polish chemist, physicist, and Nobel Prize laureate. Died in 1934. If I recall, not too well. She was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize, first person to win a Nobel Prize twice, and the only person to win a Nobel Prize in two scientific fields. Her husband, Pierre Creary, ice cream. Pierre, he was also a co-winner of the first Nobel Prize making them the first married couple ever to win the Nobel Prize, launching the Cure family legacy of five Nobel Prizes. She, in 1906, was the first woman to become a professor at the University of Paris. Cheers, girl. 1914, Archie Campbell, American actor, singer, and screenwriter, died in 1987. If you know, you know. 1915, Philip Morrison, American astrophysicist and academic. I said it, yes. 2005, he passed away from us. He was the professor of MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. <clears throat> Excuse me. Airball. He was known, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> he was known for his work in the Manhattan Project during World War II and later for his work in quantum physics, nuclear physics, and high-energy astrophysics, and SETI, the search for ET. I'm out of something I can't recall. Little green dudes. So, deaths today. Uh, it's not that hard to find a car. And if you tagged it right to begin with, not good, right? I'm not talking about work here, sorry. Eye contact. 1916, 46 people die in a streetcar number 393 in Boston. The Boston L train streetcar smashes through the warning gates for some reason on Summer Street Jawbridge in Boston, Massachusetts, plunging the people into the frigid waters on Fort Point, uh, Fort Point the frigid waters of Fort Point Channel. At least 46 people died. You had a bad day in traffic. Remember the car that didn't make it through traffic? Yeah. 1941. An estimated 5,000 souls aboard a Soviet ship, the Armenia. This is a World War II thing. The Armenia is sunk by German planes while evacuating refugees and wounded military and, and its staff of several Crimean hospitals. It is estimated that over 5,000 people died on, this, on that ship. Ah, 1983, United States Senate bombing. A bomb explodes inside the state capitol. No one is injured, but it cost a quarter million dollars in damage. Mm. Really? see the picture actually. 2013, Joey Manley, American publisher, founded Modern Tales, born 1965. I didn't do this one either. Best known for being one of the first profitable, profitable subscription models for digital content. Hold my little pinky out. Did I not do the deaths? Okay, here we go. Sorry. Make one. Human error. 
2017, James R. Thompson Jr., American Naval Officer, Engineer, the fifth director of NASA Marshall Space Flight Center, born in 1936. Uh, that NASA thing is in Alabama, by the way, if you're looking. And we got a couple of holidays going on. What do we got? Uh, Students' Day in India, the anniversary of BR. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Day, excuse me, Commemor commemoration day, the anniversary of Ben Ali's succession in Tunisia, Hungarian Opera Day, International Inuit Day, is that the, the Alaska dudes? Uh, National Day after the Treaty of Pyrenees, North Catalonia, France. National Revolution and Solidarity Day in Bangladesh. Be well. October Revolution Day by the Soviet Union or Belarus or Kyrgyzstan. Actually, I think I said that correct, right? This one I did. Uh, what is this? Taku Imonga Day. The nine-day fall festival celebrates the end of the harvest moon in India. Uh, toku means feast, eating or drinking food among, I have no idea why I even cared to put this in, but anyway, what are we at, Monday or Tuesday, I can't recall, Tuesday, right? Tuesday, sorry, took me a second, you guys have a great day, get stuff done, I'm going to see when the second truck arrives that somebody decided to, uh, use a splintery stick on me, have a great day, get to work. At least the alarm went off. Humans! Hello! Happy... What day is this? Oh, it's the second Monday of the week. Yes, it's Tuesday. The joys of working at a car dealership and trying to record a podcast. 